What is up, y'all? This is five logic pro tips for beginners. Let's get into it. What is up, y'all? It is your boy Kirk here, and I have been producing for 20 years. I've written music for movies. I've produced music that's been released on labels like Blanco y Negro, Juicy Music, a whole bunch more. I've actually even released music that has been supported by Skrillex, Jack U, Party Favor, Diplo, all the folks there. Let's jump into Logic Pro. I've done all of this in Logic Pro, and you don't need to have like a crazy session to be able to do this. So first things first, let's talk about some workflow tips. So once you open up Logic Pro, you'll get this window here. And I've talked about this in a previous video, but I'll run through it again really quick. So you have this window where you're able to choose the kind of track that you want to do. I mean, you could do a software track, you could do audio, drummer track, external MIDI, guitar, or bass, and basically like drummer and guitar or bass will basically set it up for you. An instrument track, you can do like whatever um, software instruments you have as well. So that means the stuff that comes with Logic and the stuff that also you can, you know, download and buy. Audio is like really good for like when you're recording your vocals or recording like, you know, like guitar or bass in there. This will make it easy, but I usually start with this. First things first, for workflow, what you want to do is be able to learn how to use your key commands here. So one of the most important key commands is actually Command Z, which is like undo. So if you've ever been typing or whatever and you hit Command Z, that's undo. Works in here too. And another thing that you can use is C here. So basically C, what that does is that brings up your cycle range here, this little yellow bar. You could click that as well. And this is just what you're looping. So if you play it, this will loop back. Cool. You can kind of see it will loop. So this is super helpful when you're just like trying to get ideas down really quick. I normally will work in like an eight bar loop and then like flesh out my track from there. So usually I set it like that. Another key command that you're going to need to know for workflow is K. K turns on your metronome here. You see that? And that helps you to stay really like on point. Once you open up Logic Pro, it'll probably look a little something like this. And you don't want it to look like this. Trust me, this information is not enough for when you're making tracks. And you're going to want to see more information here. I want you to actually go in here into this menu. And I want you to set it to custom. And then you got like a whole bunch more information. And you're able to do a whole bunch more. And you can see what your CPU is like and all of that good stuff. And this is going to be useful if you're using a lot of software instruments and heavy like kind of plugins. Okay, so here's another workflow tip that will actually allow you to be way quicker when you're looking through big sessions. So if we take a look at this session here, this is my track, Lay It Down. This is like the full session before I made stems and it's about 70 tracks. It's very easy to get lost in a big session. Now this may not be a big session to a bunch of people, but for me these days, this is a bigger session. So let's go ahead and create a little bit of differentiation between the tracks here. So we have, let's, let's see, we've got like a bunch of of like arps and synths here. Let's take a listen to what these are. So th those are synths that we use in this track and say we wanted to group them and color code them. Right now they're green and the colors are all over the place. Let's go ahead and color code them by hitting control C. And then we could pull up the colors here and let's say we want to color these purple. So now these are purple. But there's another step of organization that we can actually go into and say you want to be able to just really organize things quickly without having to route things and learn how to do ins and outs and it's like a lot of things. You can actually create a track stack. So Logic has these things called track stacks, which, which are folders that allow you to organize your sessions really easily. You can actually see that I have a track stack here for my drums. Basically, I can just hide all my drums and all my drums are there. So say they're already mixed and they're good to go and I don't have to worry about them anymore. Those drums are already set. So say I want to do that for the synths that we just color coded. So all you got to do is select all of your synths just like that by holding shift and clicking on the first one and the last one. And then you hit shift command D and then it pulls up this window here. Now you have two types of stacks you can do. You have a folder stack, which is basically a really basic, simple stack. It doesn't allow you to add effects to it or anything. So this is like really simple and not as good for mixing. And we'll cover that in another video. But then we have the summing stack and the summing stack is something that's like super good. It, it allows you to route things and, and just add a bunch of effects. So I would pick, pick this one, the summing stack. And then now it allows me to add plugins on here. Now, if I go back, and do the other one, it will not allow me to put plugins. It's just a bus and it doesn't allow me to do any of the special processing on the group. So we're going to do that again. We're going to pick summing stack, boom, just like that. And then also we can rename it as synths, boom. And then we can even color code it too with these colors. So you do select them all, option C, and that brings up the color, boom. And now that whole section is purple. 
which is very cool. And the track is also purple. And why is this important? This is important because it allows you to like navigate through your session very quickly. Now, before you're, you're seeing an early session for this song, Lay It Down. If you want to check it out, you can check it out. But I didn't actually start organizing it until I was ready to print stems. This is an easy way for you to print stems and an easy way to, for you to like save a session as like something that could make it easy for you to produce. So that leads me into this next thing where you can save templates as things you could start from. So for example, if you're doing like the same thing over and over again, you have to create these tracks over and over again, you could save different layers of templates. I've created this pop vocal template for y'all to even grab. You could just grab it from my website. And this is something that, that I use all the time. And I use these same settings when I'm recording vocals for people or recording vocals just for myself. So this pop template allows you to have a bunch of different things here. So we have a bunch of different things already set up and I have some notes here as well for when you grab it and how to use this thing. So this actually uses all stock plugins for you to be able to create like really high quality recordings and mixes for vocals when you're recording. So I have a beat track and then I have like a lead vocal track, a whisper track, and then I basically just did all of the effects that I would normally do on these buses. And as you can see, they're grayed out right now because you need to go ahead and hit the X key to pull up the mixer window. So you basically just select all of the tracks here and we could turn on all the effects by just clicking them all on just like this, all the effects, all the buses, and now everything will sound really cool and really good. So the real important thing about having templates is like you're able to actually start things that you normally would have to set up and, and you're saving time on actually creating and you're saving your mental energy on setting up things where you just, these are all things you're always going to do. So you might as well just have them saved so you can just pull them up really quickly. I even have channel strips that I've saved in the past that have made, that I always use on every single song. And these are a couple of different things. So if you want to check out more about this template, I have a, I have a tutorial on my channel. You can check it out on the channel. So anyway, another thing that you can do in Logic that will help you be organized and really fast is actually set markers. So if you go to this menu right up here, you can see there's an event thing, there's a marker thing, there's tempo, signature, all this stuff. So if you set up markers, this will allow you to, to, to put arrangements in. So for example, say you had a song that you wanted to you really like the arrangement of, you could take that song, put it in here and actually just write out the arrangement. So sometimes I will use it for like, for, for this kind of thing. So I'll put it in here just like this and a marker shows up right here at the top. And then you could click on this and actually change the name. So let's say intro, right? So let's go into here and we type in intro, boom. So now the intro is right here. So we could actually even set the length for it too. So let's say we want the intro to be four bars, boom, just like that. And then we can go by hitting the arrow keys, the comma and period keys, we can jump to the bar and then we can set another one. You can even set different colors. So if you selected this, this one right here and hit option C, you can actually change the color to, you know, we'll say the intro is orange, right? And then you can even go here and you could say, this will be, you know, chorus one, boom. And then this will be, you know, four bars, right? Set it to four bars. And then we can change the color by hitting option C, select that one. And let's say this is like hype. So we'll make it red, right? Or it's super hot. Yeah, we'll make it red. So you could basically do this and then you can arrange your track all the way through so that you don't have to guess what sections are what. And if you find a, a, an arrangement and in, in your tracks that really works and that you feel like just flows really well, you could just save that into your template as well. And there you go. You're like starting out. You don't even have to think about arrangement anymore. So that's a, it's a cool way to actually mark out tracks that you look up to. And then also mark out your own tracks. If you want to just continue to write music in the same form and structure as well, it's really great for dance music because you need to have an intro. You need to have like, you know, a, a build up. you need to have these sections. So this will be really good for those kinds of tracks uh, because then you can just make make the correct arrangement for DJing music and leave a comment below on what you want me to go deeper in in the next video peace